Good morning. Welcome to Willow Avenue Church. Whether you are here in person or joining us online, we're very happy that you're here with us. If we haven't met before, my name is Courtney Becker Foster. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, there is a link down in the comments section that you can click on and it will take you to our Zoom meeting. And there are quite a few people over there that who regularly attend who would love to meet you. So I'm going to go off script a little bit here and just say that if you see Audrey and I standing next to each other and you see that we match, we did not plan that. And um, it's funny how many days we show up in the office with the same color combination. Yes. Okay, so later in the service, Melly Howard will be leading us in our prayers for the church community and world. And I would invite you even now to feel free to text your joys and your concerns to the number on the screen, 717-385-2294. And I also want to thank Pastor Audrey at this time for her prayerful preparation of today's homily. So today is the first Sunday of the month, and that means that we will be partaking in communion. I would encourage those of you online to have something ready so that you can participate at that time with us as well. Today is also the third Sunday in Lent. This Lent, we are focusing on the life and faith of Peter, one of Jesus's most famous disciples. By following Peter's journey, we watch the story of Jesus unfold through the eyes of a very normal human, trying to figure it all out just like us. On the first Sunday of Lent, we learned about Jesus seeking Peter out. On the second Sunday, we learned how Jesus rescued Peter in a time of doubt. Today, on the third Sunday of Lent, we will explore and wonder about seeds of revelation that are planted in our lives and how they shape our understanding of God. Now let us center our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the singing bowl. Would you all please stand and join me in singing praise to the God who reigns? One moment, we're going to pray first, but you can stand while we pray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy word, for generations, people have bowed their heads, have prayed the Psalms, have asked for your presence in their lives. For generations, people have whispered, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God. For generations, we have gathered here. We have quieted our minds. We have prayed to feel your presence in our midst. So once again, just as the generations before, we turn our hearts to the word. Still our busy minds so that we might truly comprehend what you have to say to us today. With joy and hope we pray, amen. In singing number 101, sing praises to God who reigns, and you'll find it on the screen as well. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Oh 
to join me. One, two, three, yes. Three, five, yes, good job. Six, seven, well, oh, right. I forgot the stuffies. Well, shall we go on our journey? All right, so remember, we're going to go through these each Sunday. We'll see if you remember what they are and if I know what they are. So what was the first one there? A tuning fork. Yes, yes. One of these uh, music Sundays, you need to ask Joe to show you a tuning fork. Uh -huh. Okay, so the tuning fork to tune our hearts. And then the second one, what is that? A fish, that's for Jesus sought me. And then the third one, what are those? Waves, they're not just squiggly lines, they're waves, yes. And that is rescue me from danger. So what does that fourth one look like? A mountain or a hay bale. I like both of these answers. So this Sunday, it's praise the mount. Do you know what a mount is? Hey, Sophie, do you know what a mount is? No? Does it sound like something? What? A lot of something. Okay. Well, it's a mountain. Yes, I think you got that. So, sometimes people talk about having a mountaintop moment. Any? That's like a, an adult thing. I doubt you guys have talked and thought about having a mountaintop moment. But as a follower of Jesus, it can be explained as a moment of significant revelation given by God or a time of feeling especially close to God. So do you think you might have a mountaintop moment in God we play? You might. Maybe today's a very fun day. Good. What? We have birthdays in the room? This is exciting. <laughs> Happy birthday to Joel and to Mandy. Okay, so I hope that you guys have fun and godly play. Remember that God loves you, we love you, and we're so glad that you're here with us. So, go see if you can have a mountaintop moment. Would you please stand once again as you're able, and we'll sing This is God's Wondrous World, and we'll sing verse 3 a cappella. This is God's wondrous world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings, the music of the spheres. This is God's wondrous world, I rest in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and the wonders God has wrought. 
This is God's wondrous world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light on dark of night declare their maker's praise. This is God's wondrous world, the battle is not their For those of you following along in our devotional booklet, you may recognize this poem that was written by Reverend Sarah Speed. It's called Praise the Mount. I have stayed quiet before. I have held my tongue while passing mountains. I have slipped my hands deep into pockets, despite the music that invites me to dance. I have glimpsed a new moon and a new love and have acted as if it was not something other than a complete God-given miracle. But not today, not today. Today I will dance. Today I will tap my toes all the way to heaven's gates. Today I will point out every shade of gold and periwinkle that we pass. Today I will talk about my faith like we talk about the weather early and unprompted, comfortable and unashamed. Today, I will tell you that God did such a good job with freckles, willow trees, and your entire being. And I will not be embarrassed by my own conviction. I will not swallow my praise. I have stayed quiet before, but not today. Today, I will sing. As we turn now to a time of prayer, I would invite you to consider texting any joys or concerns that you have to 717-385-2294. As we pray together, we'll lift up those joys and concerns for all of us. And after several petitions, I will close with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, some days we are quick to declare your goodness. Like Peter, we see you in our midst and are confident in our faith. Other days, we are distracted, uncertain, desperate for answers. Some days, we are quick to trust your blessings, trusting that we are called. Other days, our praise falls silent. And so, God, we come to you today bearing all that we are, our hopes, our fears, our dreams, and our shortcomings. We bring to you the concerns of our heart, trusting that you will receive them in your bountiful love. God, we give you thanks this morning for a beautiful day, for beautiful snow-capped mountains and clean air to breathe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God, we thank you for the ways in which you show up to us in nature, for rain, for snow, for your gifts to this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we also lift up to you those with health problems. God, we pray this morning for Paul Davis with an aorta problem. We pray for good medical care for him and for full healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we also lift up to you Janet Croker, the daughter of Werner and Elsie Ann Croker. We pray for Janet, who had a stroke this past Monday and was hospitalized at San Francisco General. Yet we also give thanks that she was already regaining speech on Tuesday, and we are thankful that she is getting excellent care and is now at home. We hold her in our prayers that she can completely recover and that she can do so with grace and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we join our prayers with Arlene Stephan, who offers prayers of thanksgiving for the good medical care that her niece received in her recent hospitalization. We continue to pray for her recovery from a bacterial infection. God, may you guide the medical staff that are caring for her, that she may make a complete healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we lift up to you Joe Brewster, as this past Friday marked the anniversary of his mother's passing. God, we pray that you would comfort him with good memories of her life and surround him with love in the community here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we know that pain, fear, and doubt are all a part of the journey of faith. On the days when we feel far from you and far from ourselves, we ask for your tender grace. Pull us closer to you that we may worship you fully and completely. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join me in singing the song, which is the theme of our Lenten series and also the theme of today's service, Come Thou Fount, which is number 563. Yes. 
precious blood. O oh, to grace how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for the courts above. I invite you to hear these words from Psalm 19. Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech, no words, their voices can't be heard, but their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth. God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like a groom coming out of his honeymoon suite. Like a warrior, it thrills at running its course. It rises in one end of the sky. Its circuit is complete at the other. Nothing escapes its heat. The Lord's instruction is perfect, reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. The Lord's re regulations are right, gladdening the heart. The Lord's commands are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring the Lord is correct lasting forever. The Lord's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, even, even dripping off the honeycombs. No doubt about it. Your servant is enlightened by them. There is a great reward for keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me. Then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May we find wisdom in these words. Amen. This is the artist's statement uh, for our visual presented in our bulletin this week, and it's, the statement is, comes from Lauren Wright Pittman. It's inspired by Matthew 16, 13 through 20. I don't know if this was a moment of clarity for Peter, if he was regurgitating the answer he thought Jesus wanted to hear, or if he was trying to convince himself that dropping everything and following this man was worth it. But I imagine this was a breakthrough for Peter. I wanted to capture this as a moment of seeing and being seen. Jesus sees him as more than Simon, a fisherman and a son of Jonah, and renames him Peter, the blessed foundation through which his ministry would take root and continue to grow. Jesus sees Peter through the eyes of God. Through the middle of the image, there is a ray of light where the image comes into full color that holds 
this moment of clarity where Jesus and Peter truly see one another. In this ray, Peter's clothes, clothing holds symbols of his new identity, a rock upon which the church will be built, and keys to the kingdom. Jesus' clothing holds imagery, an oil jar, and the light of the sun, representing the way Peter sees him as the Messiah and son of the living God. Today's gospel reading is coming to us from Mark. It involves a special declaration by Peter about Jesus. Please stand as you are able as I read this. Now, when Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the human one is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And he said, and what about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, happy are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has shown this to you. Rather, my Father who is in heaven has shown you. I tell you that you are Peter. I'll build my church on this rock. and The gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Anything you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven. Anything you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anybody that he was the Christ. May this become God's word for us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And you may be seated. Long before... Albert Malot set this song, or set these words to song before the Pater Noster and the Abana in heaven. Jesus said these words to the disciples and they were new. And he said, pray to our God in heaven in this way. Please join me in singing number 673, a new version of our God in heaven. Oh God.
There are so many significant moments in this short gospel reading today that we could easily spend several weeks on these eight verses alone. Here's a highlights reel to get us started. The significance of the location of Caesarea Philippi. The specific terms, son of man, Messiah, and son of the living God. The change of Simon's name to Peter. The symbols of the rock, keys, and gates. And what in the world does it mean to bind and loose things, whether in heaven or on earth? Admittedly, I'm choosing just a few of these for the sake of our limited time this morning. And I'm also choosing to begin with the genealogy found in the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Some of us who grew up with the King James Version of the Bible call this the list of the begats. So-and-so begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so, and so on. We might also think of it as a family tree. However, 17 verses of this is enough to bore a person senseless. But it's important because critical to the story of the good news of Jesus as told by the Gospel of Matthew is the claim that Jesus is the Messiah. So how do we get into this? How do we experience this? Doug Adams was a professor of mine at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, not Douglas Adams, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, just to be clear. My Doug Adams was professor of religion and art and taught a class called Bringing Biblical Humor to Life, which I had the pleasure of taking from him. What you're about to experience is a presentation of his annotated genealogy from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's written as a melodrama, which requires audience participation, ensuring that no one falls asleep. So we're going to do a little practice before we get started. So we'll just go down the line one at a time, and when you see a word appear, you say that word out loud. One more time. All right, you get it? You ready? Here we go. An account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of Abraham, who pretended Sarah was his sister, let Pharaoh have her and received many cattle. Thank you. Abraham was the father of Isaac, whose name means laughter. And Isaac was the father of Jacob, who stole his brother's birthright. And Jacob, the father of Joseph and his brothers, who sold Joseph into slavery. And Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, by Tamar, who played the prostitute, for the sake of justice. Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab the father of Nation, a very fine captain of Israel. Nation was the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab the prostitute, who saved God's people. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth, the faithful foreigner. Obed was the father of Jesse, by the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah, whom David had set up to be killed. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam, who was the faithful to God through much of his reign, but abandoned God for five years. And Rehoboam was the father of Abijah, who had 14 wives. <laughs> Abijah was the father of Asaph, who abandoned God at the end of his life and died of gangrene at the feet. And Asaph was the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, whose pride brought his fall. Uzziah was the father of Jotham, a very good king in every way. And Jotham, the father of Ahaz, a very bad king in every way. 
And Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, who restored the kingdom to piety and justice. Yeah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh, who ruled as king for 55 years, yeah. but was evil for all 55 years. And Manasseh was the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah and his brothers, who were faithful to God throughout their lives, and were all deported to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Salathiel, and Salathiel the father of Zerubbabel, a wise governor chosen by God, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiad, and Abiad the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliad, and Eliad the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob that was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary! <laughs> of whom Jesus was born and called the Messiah. So that was fun. And I think it helps us to get into the spirit of things, to get excited about the coming of the Messiah. Yay! <laughs> but what does Messiah mean? At its core, it means anointed one, which is to smear or rub, to pour oil over someone in a ritual that confers that person into a particular office, like a monarch or a prophet. Well, there were lots of those in Israel's history, right? But a U2 song comes to mind at this moment. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The Messiah of Matthew's gospel is one who, to paraphrase Warren Carter, is appointed to manifest God's saving presence and empire. Carter uses the term empire rather than kingdom or realm to reflect the clash between Rome's empire and Caesar's ways and the claims the, God, the Gospel of Matthew makes about Jesus' ways and the kingdom of heaven. Leading up to this moment, Simon Peter and the disciples have had many experiences of healings, exorcisms, feedings, and authoritative teachings. It makes sense, then, that here they are, finally recognizing Jesus as the Messiah, yay! And though Simon Peter is the first one to say it, he, of course he is, he's always the first one to jump. As a result, Jesus blesses him and changes his name. Name changes in the Bible are always significant and connected to new purpose and identity. But the name Peter doesn't come out of nowhere. Previously, he's been called Simon Peter already. And scholars suggest that perhaps Peter is something like a nickname in reference to his rocky personality. There's a fun wordplay here when Jesus says, you are Peter, Petros, and on this rock, Petra, I will build my church. It's cute, Jesus. This is an incredible exchange, so I just want to make sure that we don't miss it. This is a mountaintop experience. Peter finally gets it. Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. Come to manifest God's saving presence and realm. And when Peter sees this, Jesus sees Peter too. You are rocky, and this rock will be the foundation of my church. Wow. Peter's going to mess up. Again. Real soon and a few more times. But it doesn't matter because Jesus sees Peter's truest self and claims him, giving him new meaning and purpose. But that's not all. In the same breath that Jesus says, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Hades, the underworld, Sheol, it's the realm of the dead. On the one hand, to talk about the gates of Hades is to use one part of something to represent the whole. It's called a metonym. It's pretty cool. 
So Jesus isn't just talking about the gates themselves, but about all of the forces opposed to God's empire and realm. And he's assuring Peter that all of these forces will not prevail against the church because Peter, and by extension, all of the disciples are given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. But what about that bit about binding and loosing things in heaven and earth? Well, stay tuned for my homily in two more weeks on Matthew 18, and we'll return to this enigmatic statement. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. God has burst into human history. The gates between heaven and earth, between us and God, have been thrown wide open. The forces of death and evil will not prevail. And what is our role? Our role is the same as Peter's and the disciples before us. Our role is to proclaim and manifest God's saving presence and realm. Our job, as we hold the keys to the kingdom of heaven, is to hold open the gates of God's realm, standing against the powers of death and destruction, of demonic forces and powers, of violence, lies, and greed, and oppression of every kind. Who do you see that Jesus is? May you experience Jesus as God's saving presence. Choose to participate in God's realm and accept your own role in standing against the powers of death and destruction. Amen. If you'll please stand and join me in reading the affirmation of faith. I will read the non-highlighted parts and Joe will lead you in reading the bold, I guess it is. Jesus asks the disciples, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? Church, Church what do you, what say? Do you say? Jesus is a hand reaching out in the storm, the voice of truth spoken over us, and love without walls. Jesus, Jesus is, is justice, justice for, the, for weary, the weary, healing for the hurt, and welcome for the stranger. Jesus is the teacher, Messiah, and friend, with me on the mountain and beside me in the valley. Jesus is a star in the night and the love that knows my name. Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Like Peter, we say, Jesus, you are the Messiah, son of the living God. Please continue standing and join us in the hymn, The Church is One Foundation, Foundation number 397.
Yet we on earth have union with God the three in one, and in six sweet communion with Moses rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we I wonder what symbols might remind you of your own God-given gifts, given to be used to stand against the powers of death and destruction. On the communion table, we have oil, rocks, and keys. Oil to remember the Messiah, the one anointed to manifest God's saving presence and realm. Rocks and keys to remember Peter's journey as we prepare to receive the gift of communion, I invite you to consider what the symbol of your story might be. At the table of Christ, we eat this bread and drink this cup to be, remember the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, to be united with Christ and with one another as the church, and to look forward to a time when all will be one. As we eat and drink with thanksgiving, Jesus Christ is present with us, and we are empowered by the Spirit to follow Jesus' way of love as the body of Christ, broken and blessed for the life of the world. Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, when you share bread together, remember me. I invite you to join me. Blessed are you, abundant God, for you made bread to strengthen us. You gave us this bread as a sign of your body. Let our sharing be a taste of the bread of heaven that feeds the world. Amen. Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. When you drink it, remember me. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for you made the fruit of the vine to nourish us. You gave us this cup as a sign of your blood. Let our sharing be a taste of the wine we shall drink in your joyful feast. Amen. I invite you to come and forward and receive a blessing with these gifts of bread and cup from the table. As always, wine is on the back, uh, on the back boxes and juice is in the front. Bread will be um, held by the servers and gluten-free crackers on the table. Please hold your chosen elements until we have formed a circle around the sanctuary. And when all who wish to participate in this meal have come forward, we will eat and drink together with our community online. And we will show the Zoom gallery on the screens here in the sanctuary.
Friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us eat together. And this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us drink together. Let us pray. In deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you, O Lord. Send us to live as transformed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us, amen. You may be seated, and as always, you can put your cups on any hard surface. A very warm welcome to guests and visitors who are here with us this morning. We hope that you will stay and join us for refreshments across the courtyard in the fellowship hall immediately following the service. On the inside of your bulletin, you can see all of the second hour options, which begin at 11. Uh, just a couple of save the dates to mention because we, we have continued to have our, I call them commercial slides. What do you call them? There's some better word than that. Communication, not commercials, goodness sakes. Uh, communication slides with uh, things that we're inviting you to pay attention to, but a couple of save the dates. One, please save the date for the next All Church Work Day coming up on the 23rd. Yes, on the 23rd. It's always a good time, but and we get some things done and we eat good food, so save the date for that, pay attention to that upcoming date. 
Um, every week during Lent, there are options to connect with pastors, so we invite you to take a look at those details in the bulletin, as well as save the date for camp. Every year, please save the date for that. Any other save the dates that we should pay attention to? Um, thank you to so many of you who serve and give in so many ways that you help to provide refreshments and you help to set up services and you help to come to all church work days. Thank you for serving, for giving, whether you give online or fancy things like QR codes or the box in the back. We are grateful for your gifts, for your presence and your service. And so now we invite you to stand for our final hymn, Go Now in Peace, number 835. I also want to mention really quickly, um, the MCC sale is coming up, which means we are doing the Fritter booth, yay. And there's a sign up in the Narthex. There's also a sign up online, but if you sign up today, I will get it online for you. So it's time to start thinking about that. Would you join me in singing this blessing one time through? Please do look at your neighbor and bless them as we sing. <laughs> this benediction. Just as Jesus affirmed Peter's confession, may we find affirmation in our faith as God sees the best version of ourselves and continues to plant the seeds of revelation. Go in peace. Amen.